Hi guys, we are at our house and we decided this year to do a Passover meal and so we thought it would be kind of fun to invite you. Um, this is our first time we've tried this so if you are Jewish, we apologize right now. Uh, <laughs> um, but because we know we're not going to be, this isn't super authentic, but we just want to honor Jesus and we wanted to think about, especially during this time when we're praying that uh, a disease would not come into our dwelling. Um, how applicable. So this today we, I, we just did a few things. I threw some stuff on the table. We want to encourage you. Maybe you want to do this at your house this, to celebrate and have a Passover. You okay, Abby? <laughs> um, so we're going to attempt to do some things and, and just really the point of this is to celebrate Jesus and to celebrate what he has done and that because of his blood and because of the, what Christ has done, we, we do not, are not under the curse of the law. So, amen, you guys? Amen. amen. Okay, well, I'm going to light the candles and say a blessing. Lord, we thank you. And there is a traditional blessing that we're going to say. <laughs> There's a traditional blessing we're going to say over this. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King, King of the, of the universe, universe, who has chosen, chosen us from the beginning of time, exalted us by making us holy through the blood of the Lamb of Christ. In love you have given us, O Lord our God, Sabbaths for rest, holidays for joy, festivals for gladness, and the sun of our redemption. You give us the feast of unleavened bread, the season of our freedom, in commemoration of the Jewish liberation from Egypt, and of the universal liberation from sin and its punishment. Blessings to the Lord God. Who saw fit to deliver us. So there is the toasting of the first cup, and they're supposed to have like four cups, but we're refilling. Refilling. We're refilling. So toast. Toasting. Toasting. Toasting all around. Cheers. <laughs> all right. This is just grape juice, by the way. <laughs> grape juice. It's unsweetened. It's unsweetened. It's not hundred percent grape juice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Keep that in the final edit. <laughs> All right. So there was the oh. So there was the toasting of the first cup. Normally they have four cups, but we're just <laughs> limited. <laughs> Abigail just jumped her fork and the food at the dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are we eating unleavened bread or matzah tonight? Because the matzah, the unleavened bread, reminds us that the Israelites, they had to wait for the, they couldn't wait for the yeast to rise. So they had to be ready to move whenever God said it was time to move. But as believers, as followers of Christ, we remember that the bread, Jesus even said, represents his body that was given for us, that was broken for us, that we might be healed. Yeast <laughs> reminds us of the words of 1 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. Don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. For Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore let us keep the festival, not with old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the yeast without yeast, the bread of sincerity and truth. And so... They would wrap the matzah in. There would be three pieces and be the one in the middle that they would break. So let's all take it out and let's all break our, and then we can uh, eat a piece of it. Um, and did you notice that on the matzah crackers, they has the puncture wounds mm. and the stripes. And this is all symbolic of Isaiah 53, right? Yes. That by his stripes were filled. He was pierced for our transgressions. Yeah. So. Because he was broken for us. Okay, that's all. <coughs>
Just, just hold okay. one piece. Okay. Just get one piece. No. Like it. Because he was broken for us. <laughs> why, why are we eating bitter herbs? Sorry. Do it again. Why are we eating bitter herbs? <laughs> why are we eating bitter herbs? For on that long ago night of the Passover, the children of Israel, God said that the bitter herbs you shall eat. And it's also to remember the bitterness of the cruel slavery of the Israelites, to recall the bitterness of their slavery. And it also reminds us as believers of the suffering that Christ took on the cross. Jesus has the bread of life, but he also paid the price to absorb our bitter sins. Psalms 22 prophesies the anguish of the Lord. We're going to read that together. Roaring lions tearing their prey, open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a posture, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you lay me in the dust. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can now count on my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So they would take this and dip that in horseradish. Why tonight do we dip our herbs twice? <laughs> Why tonight do we dip our herbs twice? The parsley stays green year round and represents the continual rebirth of growing things. And uh, while the green reminds us of new birth, it also reminds us as Christians of new life, he has given us his son. We are therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have one. So, we get to dip this in salt water twice and then take a wonderful bite. <laughs> That's not too bad. And it reminds them about that. Yeah, they wept salty tears for the life of slavery and they painted the door lentils with the blood that the angel of death may pass over. For the scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no payment of sin. You can tell we have a real family going on here. So as we're continuing with this, we would serve Elijah's cup. And it's a single goblet. And it would be passed around. And it would be symbolizing the Jewish people knew that Elijah was going to come and prepare the way for the Messiah. But as believers, we know, and Jesus even said that John the Baptist was the Elijah that was to come. And so then you would take this and we would all take a drink and pass it around the table. But because we are being healthy, health conscious, we're going to take a drink of our... Our own. Yeah, we don't want to share your drink. Honey? Yes. I forgot, why did we stick a bone, bone on the table? Well, hand me one of those bones. Seeing as there's one, it's a lamb shank. It's a lamb shank, and that, you don't, obviously you don't eat that, it's a bone. But it does represent the lamb that was sacrificed for the Passover, where they put the blood on both sides. And as believers, we can realize that it represents Christ, our Passover lamb. So that's the reason for the bone. It's a beautiful addition as well yeah, we can put it back on the main yes plate. we can put it back on the main plate and then there's also a hard-boiled egg that is served so we all have one of those why do and we have the egg why do we, what's the egg <laughs> the egg represents new life and as a believer we have new life we believe that we have new life in christ so that is the reason for the egg Mm, we like the egg. Yes, we can take the egg. It's egg. better than... Did she eat your egg? She did. She liked it. Nice. nice. 
we're having the horseradish, but then I forget why we're yeah. adding this. I thought the horseradish represented the bitterness of slavery and the sweetness reminded that of the sweetness of freedom. Oh, that's really good. That is good. Thanks, Stephanie. We'll go with that. Got a sweet deep with horseradish this time. I mean, horseradish. <laughs> No, keep saying it. It's good. <laughs> keep saying horseshoe radish. Like, you're saying horseshoe radish? I like it. This is our uh, makeshift uh, Passover. Passover meal. And uh, each element does represent stuff. And it does remind us that, that the Old Testament, it had a representation, but there's always a New Testament thing that Jesus fulfilled. Mm. Said, this is my body. Yeah. That's which why is I, broken for you. That's why I really think that the matzo crackers are so awesome. Because, don't you guys think? Cause, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you've never seen it, and like she said, there's there's the holes that are pierced, and there's like little stripes on it. I never thought of that. It's kind of kind of cool. And then we know that we take this together. Yeah. And we remember. And the, the scripture says we do this in remembrance of Him until He returns. Yes. So. Lord. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then we're going to have a Passover meal. And so we're doing brisket tonight and some <laughs> and roasted vegetables and just um, just kind of have family time. So, you know, you're sitting around, you've seen us wrestling with kids. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the that's the reality. We're all doing that right now. So, but but celebrate. Use this time to celebrate, and that Jesus is is the Passover Lamb. Love you guys.